In this enormously growing technology trends, testing plays a vital role in software development and we require a tool which can perform all desired actions. And one name you can think of here is Selenium. Selenium is one of the most predominantly used testing tool which provides all possible functionalities to test a web application. So hey everyone, this is Vaishnavi from Edureka and in this session, we'll discuss about the easiest way of locating an element in Selenium, that is the CSS selector. But before we dig deep into this topic, we'll first take a look at the agenda. First, we'll understand what are element locators in Selenium and why is it used and try to understand the different types of element locators that are present, followed by giving you a proper introduction to the CSS selector and also take a look at the syntax and some basic commands. Moving further, we'll also see a small demo where we'll try to locate an element using CSS selector. So let's begin this session by learning about what are element locators. As Selenium is an open source portable framework, we can easily inspect the element on the web page and link it using proper codes. This element locators in Selenium make it easy to find an element on the web page. It can also be termed as an address that identifies a web element uniquely within that web page. These element locators are basically the HTML properties of a web element which tells the tool that is Selenium about the action it needs to perform on the web element. So this is the proper introduction to what are element locators in Selenium. Now let's take a look at the different types of element locators that exist. The locators are of six types. We can locate any element on the web page using their ID, name, class, XPath, CSS selector, partial text and link text. We'll understand these one by one. Okay, so first we'll start with the ID. This is the most common way of locating elements since the IDs are supposed to be unique for each element. This locator looks for an element in the web page having an ID attribute. The target format will be something like this ID is equal to ID of the element. Okay, guys, so this is about the ID locator. Next, we'll move on to the name. Say if there is no ID present in the HTML code. How would you locate the element? We use the name locator. When there is no ID to use, the next worth seeing if the desired element has a name attribute or not. But it is for sure that the name cannot be unique all times. If there are multiple names, Selenium always performs actions on the first matching element. Locating element by name is very similar to locating by ID, except that we use the name as a prefix instead. So this is about the name locator. Now let's understand what is a link text. Finding an element with link text is very simple, but make sure there is only one unique link on the web page. If there are multiple links with the same link text, such as the repeated header or a footer and menu links, in such cases, Selenium will perform action on the first matching element with this link. This type of locator applies only to hyperlink text. We can access the link by prefixing our target with the link and followed by the hyperlink text. So this is about the link text. Now what is a CSS selector? This whole session is mainly concentrated on this particular element locator guys. Now let's understand what does it mean. CSS is mainly used to provide style rules for the web pages and we can use it for identifying one or more elements in the web page. Once you start using CSS selector to locate an element, you will love the speed when it is compared to XPath. We can use the CSS selectors to make sure that the scripts run with the same speed in the Internet Explorer browser as well. CSS selector is always the best possible way to locate complex elements in the web page. This type of locator mainly uses some unique symbols in order to find an element. We'll learn more about it when we get to the introduction section. Now let's discuss about partial link text. In some situations, say you may need to find the links by the portion of the text in the link text element. In such situations, we use the partial link text to locate an element. Okay, the syntax goes something like this. Find element by partial link text where you provide the partial link text of the element. So this is about the partial link text. Now let's move on to another important element locator in Selenium. That is the XPath. 
XPath is a standard navigation tool for XML and an HTML document is also an XML document that is XHTML. This XPath is used everywhere where there is XML. It is designed to allow the navigation of XML documents with the purpose of selecting the individual elements, attribute or some other part of an XML document. The syntax goes something like this. It always starts with two consecutive slashes that is two backslashes followed by the tag name and square bracket where you have to select the attribute at specifies the select function and specify the attribute and also provide the value of the attribute so that you can locate the element on the web page. So this is everything you need to know about the different types of locators in selenium guys. Now let's move on to our key point of this session that is the CSS selector and also understand what is the importance of this locator and why is it used. CSS Cascading Spreadsheets is a style sheet language used to describe the presentation of a document written in a markup language like HTML. You might think what does CSS have to do with Selenium? Well, we locate a web element by using the corresponding HTML code. This method is very fast compared to XPath, which is one of the most popularly used element locators. Then why does it have more importance than other locators? Well, to answer this, I would say this method is very simple as it uses certain symbols for locating an element on the web page. So this is about the CSS selector. Now let's take a look at the syntax and a few basic commands that are used. The syntax of the CSS selector goes something like this. The HTML tag followed by the unique symbol used to locate the element and the value of the attribute that is present. This syntax follows when the ID attribute is present. Now, what if there is no ID present? How would you locate an element without an ID? Say if the class attribute is present or the name. Again, we use the unique symbol to identify the element on the web page. Say if the class attribute is present, we are going to use the dot between the HTML tag and the value of the attribute. Now, say if there is no ID specified nor the class, how do you find the element using CSS in this case? We use different symbols that helps us in locating the elements. As you can see, there are three different commands here. For partial values, say if you want to search for a partial value of the target element, you can do it using CSS selector by using the command HTML tag followed by the locator and asterisk specifies that it is a partial value. Now say if you want to match a prefix of a particular element on the web page, you can do it using the CSS selector by using this command HTML tag followed by the attribute and a caret symbol and also specify the prefix of the string. This caret is the symbolic notation to match a string using the prefix. Now if you want to match the particular element with the matching suffix, how would you do that? We use a dollar symbol in order to find the suffix of an element on the web page. Now say if you want to find an element which is nested below. Say if there is a header, say if there is immediate child and there is the ancestors and so on. How would you find the grandchild of an element? Using CSS selector, we can use the inner text to do the job. Inner text helps us identify and create the CSS selector using a string pattern that the HTML tag manifests on the web page. The syntax goes something like this. HTML tag followed by colon contains and the text that you want to search for. This colon sign symbolizes the contains method. What is a contains method? Contains method is a value of a class attribute which is being accessed and the text is a particular element on the web page that you want to search. Okay, so these are the basic syntax and commands that you need to know when you're working on the CSS selector. However, in the end CSS covers almost every element on the web page and makes the process of finding the element easy. Now let's move on to the most interesting part of this session where I will show you how CSS selector works. In this demo section, we'll try automating a very famous e-commerce website ebay.com. So to do that, we require the Java libraries present in our system and also an IDE where we can write our code. As you can see that I already have the Eclipse IDE present here. 
we consider using the Eclipse IDE because it is user friendly and provides various functionalities. Now if you want to check if the Java libraries are present, just go to the command prompt and type Java version. This specifies the version of Java installed in your system. Okay, now let's click on our latest Eclipse IDE. Launch the process. This is the Eclipse workspace guys. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be automating a website called eBay.com. So to do that, we require a project under which we'll write our code to automate the web page. So first we'll create a new project. So to do that, go to file, go to new. You can't see a Java project here. Okay, so just go to other and type Java. You can find that there is a Java project here. Just click on it. It asks for a name. So I'm going to give this as CSS selectors. Selenium. Okay, just click on finish. No. You can see that the folder by the name of your project is being created. And you can also find the Java libraries present here. And the source field is where we'll write our piece of code. So first let's link the Selenium libraries to our project. So to do that right click on your project. Just go to build path and configure build path and add external jars. So we require the Selenium libraries now. So these libraries can be easily downloaded using Selenium's official website. So now I'm just going to click on this copy this. Okay. Go to the left control A and open. And we require Selenium standalone server. Okay. So these are the Selenium libraries which we require in our project. So you can see that there is another folder being created of the name reference libraries where all our Selenium libraries are present. Now in order to write the piece of code, we are going to create a package under which we'll write our class. Just create a package. Package always starts in the reverse order. So I'm just going to write edureka co.edureka and finish. Okay, you can see that the package is being created. Now right click on the package and go to class. It creates a class. So I'm going to name this as demo class and select the main function and click on finish. So you can see that the project comes under the package co.edureka under which the demo class resides and we are going to write our piece of code under the main function. So first we need to set the driver to a particular browser driver. So in order to do that, I'm going to set the system property to the driver that we prefer. So I'm going to prefer working on Chrome driver in this case. So I'm just going to write web driver dot Chrome dot driver and and this argument specifies the path in which it resides. So let's see where this Chrome driver resides. You can see that there is a folder here which says Chrome and just copy this Chrome driver path and go back to our project and paste the location over here. One thing you need to know when you're writing the path is you have to specify if it is an executable file or not. Without that you cannot execute any project on Chrome. So I'm just going to specify the extension that is Chrome driver dot exe. This is the executable file. Okay. Now we need to link the web driver instance to the new Chrome driver. So to do that, I'm going to create an object of the web driver and call it the driver and instantiate it with the new Chrome driver. You can see that it is throwing an error on the web driver as well as the Chrome driver. So I'm just going to click on this. It says import web driver, which means we are going to import the web driver packages to our project. The same goes with the Chrome driver as well. Import it. Okay. And after this, we need to get the URL of the web page that we want to perform actions on. So I'm going to consider the object of the web driver that is driver dot get, which is of the form string and specify the URL of the web page. So in this case, it is the ebay.com so http ebay.com okay specify the url now we need to find the element on the web page so first let's google search it we'll search for ebay.com 
So this is our web application guys. We are going to perform all our operations on this web page. So now say if you want to search for this particular element on the web page. Each element in this page is considered as a web element. So say if you want to search for this particular element, I'm going to inspect this by right clicking. You can see that the corresponding HTML code for this location is present here and the ID is present, which is the CSS locator. One good thing about Selenium is that it allows the plugins to work with them. So Selenium also supports a plugin called Crow Paths where you can easily find the XPath and the CSS selector of the location. So to get more information about this Crow Path, how it works and how elements can be located using Crow Path, just check out the link that is put up in the description of this video. So you can see that the CSS selector of this element location is present. So I'm just going to copy this and go back to my project. And now I'm going to write a corresponding code to that location. So considering the object of the web element driver dot find element by I'm going to consider this by the CSS selector and also specify the CSS selector within quotes. So hash will be the string selector of the web element and I'm going to send keys to that particular location. So send keys. Say if I want to search for one of the trending phones one plus 60. Okay. Now we've found the search box on the web page and then we've sent keys to that particular location and now we need to search for the search icon on the web page. Let's close this. Now I'm going to inspect the search button here. Inspect it. You can see that the ID is present here too. So just go to the crow path. Relative path is present. Absolute path is also specified and the CSS selector of this particular location is also present because ID is present. So copy this location and go back to our project and write the corresponding code. It is driver dot find element by CSS selector and I'm going to specify the location of the CSS selector and click because it's a button. Okay, so let's see what happens while we execute this program. So I'm just going to save this program and run it. Okay, it opened the website. It checks for one plus 60 and clicks the search button. I think you guys have understood how this works. Now say if you want to modify this particular process, how would you do that? Let's take a look. Now say if you want to perform scrolling through a web page and also try using the different element locators like the dollars, the carrot and so on. So we can do that using this commands here. So first let's maximize the web page. So it is driver dot manage dot window dot maximize. So this particular command helps in maximizing the web page. Now say if you want to perform actions like scrolling down through a page and so on. We can do that using the JavaScript executor. This JavaScript executor is an interface between the Selenium web driver and the UI interface. So now I'm going to add the JavaScript executor here. And also create an object of the same and call it JS is equal to JavaScript executor and we'll also link this JavaScript executor to the driver. Okay, you can see that the JavaScript executor is throwing an error. So I'm just going to import the JavaScript executor functions and packages into a project. So now let's crawl down through the web page using the JavaScript executor. So I'm going to consider the object of the JavaScript executor JS dot execute script. We'll consider only one argument in this case and specify the function window dot scroll by by specifying the axis in which I want it to scroll through. So I'm going to specify 300. I'm going to delete the argument here. Okay, now let's save this and run it. Maximizes the page. So just for 1 plus 60 and scrolls down. Okay, so this is a very simple program guys. Now say I search it manually one plus 60 and click on the search button. 
and scrolling through it. Now say if you want to search for this particular element on the web page, I'm going to inspect it and you can see that the class is present here, which is an element locator in Selenium again. So this span that is the HTML tag of the particular element is span. Okay, so we'll write our code click control F where the code comes up. So I'm going to consider the span use the dot. Okay, you can see that this particular element has been located here using this particular command. Okay, so the dot operator helps in specifying the class of the particular element. Now say if you want to search for the immediate child class after the parent class. So you can see that the division tag is a parent tag of this span. So I'm going to consider the parent tag first that is div greater than. Now talking about the other commands that we use in order to locate the elements, we can use the partial text link. So I'm going to consider this class here. I'm going to copy this class and click control F where you can get the search box. So I'm going to specify the tag associated with it, which is span followed by the locator class and an asterisk and specify this element location. Now say if you don't want to write the entire code, so I'm just going to write item price. So I'm going to take off this S. So even in this case, you can see that it is locating to the same position. So this is how we use the star operator in the CSS selector guys. So now if you want to search the element by its prefix or the suffix, you can use caret or the dollar symbol. Okay, so this is everything you need to know about the CSS selectors in Selenium guys. If you want to learn more about Selenium web driver do check out the Selenium playlist. Thank you for watching this video. Happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!